Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning for Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and religious, for those recommended to our prayers, especially the poor, the suffering, the sick, and the dying, particularly in the tragedy in Turkey and Syria, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. Be my protector, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin our liturgy on this solemnity of a Sunday, sixth Sunday in ordinary time, we ask the Lord for a clean heart. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you will, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has placed before you fire and water. Stretch out your hand for whichever you wish. Before a man are life and death, good and evil, and whichever he chooses will be given to him. For great is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and sees everything. 
The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, and he knows every deed of men. He has not commanded anyone to be ungodly, and he has not given anyone permission to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who walk whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees. With all their hearts they seek him. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonders of your law. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep them to the end. Grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, among the mature, we do impart wisdom although it is not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glorification. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, <clears throat> that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, Till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Then whoever relax relaxes one of these commandments and teaches others so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But they who do them and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people of old, you shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother or sister shall be liable to judgment. 
Whoever insults his brother or sister shall be liable to the council. And whoever says, you, are f- you fool, shall be liable to the hell of fire. So, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. And first be reconciled, and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser while you are going to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put into prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, makes her an adulteress. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said that it was said to the people of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. It would not be too fanciful to suggest that the three chapters of Matthew's Gospel, 5, 6, and 7, uh, is presented by Matthew as a sort of inaugural address at the beginning of his public ministry. It's quite common for people going into office to give an opening address, setting out their ideals, their standards, their hopes, uh, and their insights into the future. So Jesus sets out in the Sermon on the Mount, and that's what happens in these three chapters. He sets out his vision for his life's work. He speaks about the Beatitudes, about the kind of people he expects as disciples, his way of building up the kingdom of God, about the pillars of the kingdom, prayer, fasting, uh, almsgiving, trust in God. And he speaks about the golden rule, which is part of the wisdom of the ages. So in these three chapters, we have a very clear vision of the style of life, the kind of life that he will live and that 
his disciples, his followers, will live. Of course, there's a great deal more to follow, to come later, in terms of changing our relationship with God, his passion, his death, his resurrection, and the mystery of the church. But why is Matthew recalling this? Because in his time, in his world, after Jesus had ascended to heaven and the Spirit had come and the church had, was getting started, there was a problem about those who wanted to make everyone Jewish first and then Christian followers of Jesus, who was a Jew. On the other hand, we were beginning to attract the attention of the Gentiles, of those who were not Jews, those who were called pagans. And so the church was confused. Do you have to submit to the whole of the Mosaic law in order to follow Jesus? And so the question really resolves itself into the whole issue of the synagogue versus the church. And some were taking the view that we have to have nothing to do with the past. This is a completely new experience and a new reality. And others were saying at the other extreme, you must first submit to the law of Moses before following the law of Christ. Jesus himself was aware of this and states very vividly that he has not come to abolish, but to complete, to fulfill the law in a way that was not expected. And this Sunday, the four of his examples are read aloud in the church. The old law said, do not kill. But the new law says, not only must you not kill, but even being angry displeases God. And so reconciliation becomes a central reality. We can't go around nursing enmity with fellow Christians or anyone else. The old law uh, said you must not commit adultery. But Jesus' approach to that is not only must you not commit adultery, but even to look lustfully at another is to commit adultery in the heart. So you can see that it's not abolishing. It is strengthening and deepening and refining and making sharper uh, the reality of the old law. The old law under Moses allowed, in certain circumstances, divorce. But Jesus says, no divorce. We revert to the original dream of God, that marriage is indissoluble. And swearing, there was so much swearing, taking oaths, lightly and trivially that Jesus wants his disciples not to swear at all. So, and it will continue because there are a few more very important uh, insights like that which we will hear later. So Jesus is completing, deepening the seriousness, the moral seriousness of our human life and making the law actually more demanding and more concerned with the deep values underlying the law. He's going to the heart of all morality with his higher standards. What this means is that we as Christians must cherish the religious tradition from which we came. 
and not only cherish it, but realize that to fully understand the New Testament, we have to have some appreciation of the Old Testament. St. Augustine put it, as he always does, very, very sharply, that the New Testament reveals the richness of the Old Testament. And the Old Testament contains the New Testament in prophecy, in a secret way, and it is all revealed in Jesus. So we have to be alert, especially if we have a ministerial role in the church to the beauty and strength of our religious tradition going right back to Moses. And we have to be very sensitive about how we think and speak about those who are still of the old dispensation, who are the current brothers and sisters who are Jewish. We must not reject them, we must respect their religious tradition and learn from them the full meaning of what is in the New Testament, in Jesus our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Loving Father, we come before you in thanksgiving for the riches you have bestowed upon the human race, for the tradition that we have inherited. And we ask you to hear our prayers made in faith in the name of your Son. That our church and parish community may seek the life and love of God in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Stephen, and his auxiliary, uh, Father Schoen, and all our priests, all deacons, and all who serve the Church, may be ministers of God's forgiveness and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations, governments, and people of the world may realize the goodness of all that God has made and work together for the just use of the earth's gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That students and young people may be inspired by God's holy wisdom to make responsible and mature decisions in the choices and challenges that will face them in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor and the homeless, the sick and the suffering, the addicted and the abused may find among us compassion and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will welcome into the heavenly kingdom the souls of all who have died in God's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for those who are still alive under the rubble in the disasters in Turkey and Syria and for those trying to rescue them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. In you, O God, nothing is hidden. From you, O Lord, no secrets are kept. Hear the prayers and hopes of our hearts that we may have the courage to speak what we hope for and live what we seek. In Jesus' name, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become, for those who do your will, the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up now to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his sufferings he cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. Yeah. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Let us pray. <coughs> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. <coughs> Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell 
Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.